Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Cracking It's Steve. About to react to this D'Angelo vid. It's titled, Why Be Funny When You Can Be Racist? Oop. So he's talking about Andrew Schultz. I just made a video yesterday talking about the whole shits and gigs drama, and Andrew was kind of at the center of that drama. Um, I... I used to think Andrew was funny years ago. I feel like over time he has become a lot less funny in my opinion because nowadays it just seems like he's trying too hard. You know, it seems like he is, you know, trying to say the most edgy thing that he can think of and he's trying to just be racist and, and rely on dark humor instead of actually being funny. Like, I don't mind a racist or edgy joke but it still needs to be funny. <laughs> and I hate when people rely heavily on just the shock value of it all. Like that's just your go-to is just to be shocking in some type of way. Like you're not really focused on actually being funny. And that's the whole point is to be funny. <laughs> that's the point. So that's my issue with Andrew. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I really don't care what he does. I don't watch him or care what he puts out at all. But uh, yeah, Let, let's hear what D'Angelo has to say about him. Let's watch. If I had to sum up today's entire video in a single word, it would be pathetic. The person Ooh. I'm talking about today, I just, I find him pathetic, honestly, and so strikingly unoriginal that his name is basically interchangeable to me. He doesn't exist as a unique concept or presence on the internet. I could make every single point in this video by talking about anybody who that. happens to be in this group of unfunny, mm. offensive comedians, podcast hosts, the man with the microphone spewing middle grade playground takes about race, gender, orientation, etc. All concepts that he has absolutely no understanding of because he exists outside of discrimination for any of them. And so to explore my disdain for this type of person, of which there are far too many, we will be discussing none other than Andrew Schultz, whose name I may as well have picked out of a hat because there are so so many Andrew Schultzes on the internet with a million followers. And surely if there's enough room on the internet for an infinite number of mid-podcasts, then I reckon there should be just enough space left for me to point out how egregiously stupid all of this is and all of these people are. But first, welcome. My name is D'Angelo, and I am your professor of gymnastic accounting, which is a very real degree that I definitely do have. Or maybe this is just me broadcasting myself talking in my room like YouTube used to be. And in today's lecture, we're going to be looking at what happens when talking in your room goes a little too far. And we're going to see what kind of person it takes to build an entire career from standing in front of a microphone saying what is essentially nothing at all. So I think the most important framing device for this video is to kind of get the elephant in the room out of the way early. Andrew Schultz is racist. I know I'm on the internet and people get their feelings hurt really easily by that word. I know I'm they supposed to say like, oh racist. yeah, he might Stop be not racist. They just said less and you're just too sensitive. You don't understand comedy. <laughs> that's what they say. And it's like, nerd. <laughs> sure. I don't know if that and that's the other thing I hate about comedians who, who rely too heavily on dark humor and, and racist jokes because when you do point out that, mm, I don't think it's that funny, that's the go-to as though you must be offended and that's why you don't like it. It's not because the, the joke is shit. It's not because it's not that funny. It's because you're too sensitive. You're the problem. You know? So I, I feel like that's such a, an easy deflection, you know, that people throw out there and it's just like no i don't mind <laughs> i don't mind edgy jokes just you, your joke isn't funny like i've laughed at these other races and edgy jokes just yours is trash you know so i i, I don't like that He's actually right. He's racist. It's apparent from this podcast clip that started going viral recently where you can see so many men with microphones this, oh with God, these man. two being guests on the podcast and this being our friend oh, Andrew. Guess so the conversation the turns to black women and the guests, James and Fuhad, start talking about the black girlfriend effect. Wait, what, is the, what is the black girlfriend effect? This oh, you don't know about about the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend, all of a sudden he's got a buzz cut, like, yeah. can he shape up? Nah, nah, yeah. 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 So as they explain, this effect is a man glowing up when he gets a black girlfriend, leveling up his drip, magnifying the race, etc. It's a silly joke, completely harmless, but Notice how immediately Andrew has to swoop in and shoot down the idea that a black woman could ever improve somebody's life. Even as they're talking, he's uncomfortable. Yeah, he, he def I, I definitely peeped that. When they were explaining what it was, he was automatically like, nah. And he said, I don't like that. I don't like that. 
what is there not to like about that? Like, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't like that people are saying that black women are, you know, the the reason why these white men have have had a glow up and they look better <laughs> and they have better lives. I, I don't like that. Let, let's now shit on black women like that. That's what it gave one thousand percent. They shave their hair because they start losing it because it's so stressful. He literally said, "I don't like that." In the hood. Now, I really want you to analyze the scene that's about to unfold. I almost wish I could get David Attenborough to analyze this. Like, just these people and their natural habitat. You can see in Andrew's face that he is calculating. He's waiting. He's just repeated the racist stereotype that black women are angry, right? Constantly complaining to the point of causing stress for their partners. And James and Fuhad have a choice. Actually, the same choice that every man is faced with constantly when he's in a room with only men. Am I gonna let this slide? And James and Fuhad have all too predictably decided that, yes, they are going to let this slide. So then after sensing zero pushback, Andrew decides to take it a little bit further. They, they grow a beard they 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 more cushion when they get slapped the f out of the front. <laughs> <laughs> so now this joke happy. has evolved into black women are angry and violent. And Andrew is literally giddy, bouncing up and down like a right. child who has been giving <laughs> gifts at Christmas. And the gift he's received is complicity. I mm. actually feel like these two look fairly uncomfortable now, but nevertheless, they are still laughing. I think that's even more pathetic. Bing. And they say nothing, which allows Andrew to swoop in for the trifecta. I think the black girl for the flag, hmm. <laughs> It might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. And that is how an extremely lighthearted joke about guys changing up their style to impress black women got flipped within mere seconds. It even if they were uncomfortable and they just laughed because ha ha, we don't know what to say or do. Ha, we're just gonna let this slide. Ha, he's being racist and we don't like it, but ha, ha, we're gonna play along. That's pathetic. You're a grown, you are grown men. Okay, it's two of you. You're grown men. And you're gonna like, let me laugh to play the song because I'm too much of a bitch to say something back. Like, and obviously nobody's expecting them to go off on Andrew or curse him out or get violent with him. But you know, it's, it's a comedic environment, right? Throw some shit back at him. Like, no, let's talk about your, your women. Let's talk about what, what they be doing. I saw this the other day, da da da. Like, you know, have some banter, go back and forth. But there's like no defense whatsoever think that makes it even more pathetic if they were actually uncomfortable it didn't look like they were uncomfortable to me but if they were that makes it even worse <laughs> that makes you look even more of like a bitch into black women are angry violent and men need to be protected from them and obviously media literacy is at an all-time low because somehow this entire exchange gets interpreted by millions of people no less as comedy but make no mistake what you've just witnessed is not skill this is habit being able to exist in an environment where you get zero pushback for so long and constantly pushing the envelope to see what you can get away with none of this is dependent on any sort of comedic skill it doesn't take any it's sort of time observation or intelligence to do that even the stereotypes that are being boosted here are old they're tired and they're as old they're... as time and so for anyone who wants to say he can't be racist he's just telling a joke I would like them to point out where the joke is. I played the entire exchange front to back, and yet no part of this exchange speaks to any inherent skill as a comedian. But people are laughing one might say but they're laughing at black women that's what no one ever seems to point out in these conversations Nobody is laughing at Andrew Schultz in this clip. It's five men sitting around laughing at black women. That exactly. is sort of the context that I feel like a lot of these comedians are missing. You are elaborately setting up all these situations and scenarios in which you can punch down at people. And then you get a whole crowd of people laughing at the people you're talking down to. And you think they're laughing because you have comedic skill. It is mm. pure and utter delusion. And uh, also it's racist. Even the two guests that yeah. were laughing admitted it after the fact. Podcast duo sorry for jokes about black women. What a headline. Andrew was making a joke. Uh, I'm not even gonna get into specifics making a uh, like frankly like racist joke yeah and we were laughing at it. they then proceed to say that while they know there is no excuse they were laughing for a reason fight or flight is a real thing like it is yeah fight or flight is a real thing when you're in there you're in shock you're in shock and all you want to do is move on so they had to laugh because they were in shock. And listen, laughing out of discomfort is a very real thing that I do far too often for my own liking, frankly. But you guys didn't say anything. You didn't so- And my biggest problem with this is that I looked it up and this podcast occurred two months ago. 
two months ago. So apparently you weren't that uncomfortable. Apparently you didn't have that big of an issue about what was said because it took you two months to respond after you, you got all the backlash. Now you want to come out and say something about it. No, 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 no. If you truly felt like it was in an, an uncomfortable situation and, you know, he basically made these racist jokes and you guys didn't know how to respond, I feel like you would have addressed it immediately. No, not after you get backlash months later. Fake. How much a side eye? Head till hit him with a brother. What did you mean by that? I understand being shocked that someone is being racist right in front of you. Though, frankly, my shock only lasts for like 0 0.2 seconds. And the other thing, why would you be shocked about Andrew being racist? That's what he does. That's the type of comedy that, that he exhibits on that fucking podcast, bro. So... I would think y'all would be aware of that going on his show. And even if you were not, should have did some research beforehand to see what type of podcaster slash comedian that he is. At this point, but y'all were not the victims here. You were enabling another person to target black women as the victims. What they really should have said in their apology is honestly, as a man, it's a lot easier to be James and Fuhad. It takes a lot less effort. It makes things a lot less complicated when you just put up with the bros instead of calling them out. People really hate to be rejected. And when you take that desire for group acceptance and add it to an environment in which there is nobody to call you out and the targets of your rhetoric are absent, that's how you wind up with the headline like podcast duo sorry for jokes about black women. Black women who are quite often left out of these conversations. And so these situations just go on and on and on ad nauseum because not only are people not listening to the black women involved they're not even talking to them and their apologies y'all did not center black women in that apology like why are y'all so afraid to say black women like our community we apologize to our community no apologize to the black women within your community and then you end up missing really important nuances in the conversations like this but let me just talk about this freeze and flight reasoning they've given women who have been assaulted we'll talk about being in a freeze and f um or flight position and i just hope that the people who can acknowledge that james and Fu had froze will also acknowledge and give the same grace to women when women talk about being in freeze and flight mode i think that's all i want i think that i can't even verbalize it this is really exhausting me today i think she has verbalized but see on the other end i don't think y'all should be exhausted by this <laughs> I, I don't think it's that serious as far as like working yourself yourself up over. I get the bigger picture and wanting to hold people accountable so that black women do not continue to get disrespected. I get that. Okay, you gotta think about the bigger picture. I understand it. But if doing that is stressing you out, then I think you might need to take a step back. <laughs> Because there are some people who are able to get their shit off and give their opinions and go on about their day and not be emotionally affected by it. I'm, I'm one of those people, okay? I, I feel like D'Angelo might be one of those people. He, he seems like, I don't know, I don't know, though. But if it's upsetting you, then you probably should take a step back. Just saying. It though quite well. It's exhausting because this type of comedy and more importantly the mental gymnastics people do to excuse it relies on so many double standards and systemic issues that whereas some people can think about it in a vacuum others cannot but then what happens when a black woman gets a little too exhausted and she's not verbalizing it in the exact way that people are comfortable with hearing she gets called angry by people like this and so as you can see this isn't just racism we're dealing with here it's like this really deeply systemic racism designed to infuriate and it's deeply insecure because he is trying to preemptively call out the black woman for constantly complaining as he puts it or as i would put it calling out racism and so that's how i discovered andrew schultz because i saw the bbc article about the podcast duo apologizing but it turns out that this shtick is andrew schultz's mo with everybody actually being racist getting a whole room of people to laugh at it and then making it increasingly difficult for people to call out that racism without being perceived as spoiling the fun but trust me people exactly. are calling it out Sensitive. andrew schultz's anti-indian rant in front of indian co-hosts i used to be an andrew fan but his comedy has turned less making fun and more about 
getting some deep-rooted stuff out in public mm. while one or more of the guys around him laugh to give him approval that he's funny. This mm. clearly isn't just a Be disgruntled gone. fan making things up. This is the exact behavior that happened with James and Fuhad, except this time it happens to be about Indian people. Andrew Schultz, like Russell Peters, takes the mickey out of everyone usually quite wittily and with a surprising amount of cultural knowledge. I guess it takes a lot of culture to lean into the most tired stereotypes of all right? time. But I see I'm this creative. a lot, actually, as pushback when people do speak up about this. Like, oh, he just makes, he, he's, he makes fun of everyone. You know what I mean? Like, are you saying he's racist against everyone? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Next, U.S. comedian called out for anti-indigenous racism. So you got black women on TikTok, Indian people in their own subreddit, indigenous folk in the National Indigenous Times, <laughs> calling the material disgusting, saying it's disgraceful, and anyone applauding this ought to be gravely ashamed. And this has been Andrew's whole gig for years at this point. Netflix goes all in on anti-Asian racism. He was on Netflix in 2019 calling coronavirus the Asian parasite and the Wuhan plague. Don't tell America to wear masks. Tell China not to infect. I mean, let's be honest, next to squatting to smoke a cigarette, slinging viruses is their favorite thing to do. He then goes on to claim he's not talking about- That's not even fun. This is what I'm talking about. It's not even funny. <laughs> nor original at all but it's it's like where's the comedy if you're a comedian that's what confuses me chinese people only the chinese government really andrew the chinese government is squatting to smoke a cigarette sounds like something a person would do but what do i know i'm just an angry black woman on the internet but no jokes aside i am not a woman and if i was I honestly shudder to think how poorly this video would be received because despite all the criticism, you got Andrew over here with his 3 million subscribers who I'm sure would be really happy to jump in and let me know just how wrong I am. And looking at Andrew's channel, you can really see how this is all he has. A gay Mexican serial killer? The Middle East has gay people now? Palestine protests taken over by lesbians? Be careful with yeah, Latinas. Interracial up. couple gets roasted. Like, so it lazy. doesn't even really matter what <laughs> he's lazy saying comedy. in these clips. What he's doing is extremely deliberate. The most popular piece of content he's ever uploaded is called Albino Says the N-Word. This was never about comedy. It's just about shock, stereotypes, mm -hmm. and contextualizing yourself in a way where you you can never really get called out for it because you surround yourself with people who laugh. I'm sure the number one pushback I'm gonna get from people on this video is, no, you're calling him racist, but he has this whole podcast with a black man, the brilliant idiots. But has it occurred to you that I do not care. This isn't a sign of anything <laughs> other than Charlemagne's willingness to put up with Andrew. And Andrew really seems to have bought into this idea of like, a pass from the black community. Even the way he talks is so deliberately put on. Like, just listen and you'll see exactly what I mean. Can you make sure that she was strong enough to do it? That's a heavy door. Let's not play games. Come on now. That was a good ad. That's a Mexican right there. Only, only a Mexican could whistle like a boober. That was incredible. Come on now. That's a Mexican right there. That was a good whistle. Like, Andrew, wh why are you speaking like this? Why have you affected this tone when this is how you actually speak? Yeah, they were putting this version of stand-up out there that just wasn't that funny. Mm. And it was just like super cookie cutter, very polite, very kind of like um, woke, not ruffling any feathers. And I just always found things funnier that were a little bit maybe darker, twisted, devil's advocate-y. Like, what's the worst thing that I can defend in a comedic way? I actually find that- I mean, to be fair, I feel like he pretty much sounds the same. <laughs> But of course, you know, when you're speaking, you know, in an interview, your tone is going to be a bit different. But if you listen to how he sounds, I think he pretty much sounds the same. I thought he was about to sound like, <laughs> oh, no, like super proper and posh. But I feel like, to be fair, he sounds the same. He's just, you know. A lot of comedians do this and people are just shockingly okay with it. Ready to get up on that stage and it's like, shoot, you're hearing a completely different person. And it's like... You just code switched from white to white with extra steps. What do you mean? Unless you think I'm just reaching or grasping at straws, this is something that thousands of people have acknowledged. When Andrew appeared on Joe Rogan's podcast, which we'll get to in a second, one of the top comments said, Joe should have scheduled a black guy to come on halfway through so we could have two hours of white Schultz and two hours of black Schultz. It is so very obvious, regardless of whether people want to see it or not. I kind of love his appearance here on the Joe Rogan podcast because it really just exposes how when you take away 
away the racism, the offensive material. Andrew Schultz doesn't have Cartman. an original <laughs> thought in that head of his. A orangutan is stabbing fish while hanging from a tree like this. They figured out how to use tools. So if, oh, this is actually interesting. So if we're watching them in their Stone Age, mm -hmm. it's completely plausible that some other life form is watching us in our advanced exactly. state of evolution. He does this so often where he'll just say, I, I need to hear how he sounds on his podcast when there are no black guests. <laughs> you know, because I don't know. Because you, you can argue that his tone is that specific way when he's doing interviews, but when he's on stage or when he's in an environment where he's comfortable, he's a bit more urban. Because I, I don't know where he grew up. Maybe he grew up around, you know, people of color. So that that slang and the way that he speaks is that rubbed off on him but yeah i would have to listen to him more i'm not too familiar with andrew the most obvious statement that even a 12 year old could have surmised and then they'll just lean back like wow i really just i really just did that off the dome imagine we lived through the time where i couldn't get in touch with you unless you were home yeah, and yeah, could hear window. your phone yeah and we could also live in a time where i could instantaneously be at your house yeah in the same life. Yeah. Have you ever seen a grown man so stupid it makes you want to cry? And when Joe Rogan fans are unanimously calling you out, you know you've messed something up. Andrew's the type of guy who finishes your sentence and now that's his idea. He's the type of guy to ask questions he thinks he already knows the answer to. The exact type of guy that thinks comedians are modern day philosophers. But it's not just commenters who it's call funny. him out for his Schultz epiphanies. These are things that are so easy to see through. Even a fellow comedian called him out to his face at one point. This is one of the rare instances where you're going to see Andrew Schultz receive feedback that is anything other than forced laughter. I have then everything I need and I'm not what? happy. Thanks, Pill. Whoa. I love Schultz Epiphanies. What are you talking about? Schultz Epiphanies are my favorite. <laughs> he repeats his statement. Like, That's crazy, though. <laughs> this podcast crew definitely lets him just go on his philosophy talks for way too long. And the fact that they laughed at him when Shane said that just shows they agree. Good episode, though. Not even this man's fans can take him seriously at this point. Like, truly. Who does he have left? And actually, speaking of Shane Gillis, I'm not really very familiar with him, but... I did find it very interesting that in this very same podcast episode, he actually does the only thing I've ever, ever wanted to see happen to any of these podcast bros with their microphones and their comedy specials. Shane Gillis calls Andrew Schultz unfunny to his face, oh. and Andrew's reaction is genuinely incredible to me. It really just confirms show it, show every suspicion it. I had about him, which is that, again, when you take away all of the nonsense, there is absolutely nothing there. He has no legs to stand on. So for context, they pull up this picture of this lifter with Down syndrome, who they're comparing to Shane. Yeah, hold on. That's crazy. Oh my God. Uh, you look good. What you're about to see is one of the deepest clips on the internet, because in real time, you're going to see a man in this all-man environment go through the calculations, run the numbers, and try to figure out what will happen if he actually says something. The thing that never happens. And then, by golly, he actually says something. Uh, you look great, dog. Congrats. I don't think that's funny. But, um... <laughs> yeah, I, I see that. I see why. I see why. Like, you don't get it, you mean? Immediately flipping this into... It. Oh, you just so don't scary. understand it. Like, this is what? what I just... This is my point! <laughs> With these dummies who, who follow this type of comedy. That is their go-to. That's in real time as this entire podcast you don't get it. just starts crumbling into middle school. I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't get the joke. It's <laughs> yeah. okay, dude. It's okay. Realizing in real time that this is in fact middle school behavior and you can opt out of it is just so fascinating to me to watch. Again, David Attenborough, where are you? How old are you guys? Say what? 38. Oh, wow. 38. Yeah, you guys act the young. Though. You guys. <laughs> you guys, uh, what are you guys? 18. Also, Andrew Schultz is 40, by the way. Like, actually 40. Like, on God, unironically, born in 1983, 40. Like, older than Shane Gillis, 40. What are you doing with your life, my guy? What is any of this? How are you cool with this being your internet presence? I'm sure someone will ask, what does his age have to do with it? It has 
everything to do with it. This guy is stuck. You want to be black, you'll never be black. You want to be a cool kid, that ship has sailed. You are the cool kid's dad at this point. And this, like, inauthentic, fake, forced nonsense that has wormed its way into his entire shtick. It's so indicative of Andrew Schultz just being the worst type of comedian, aka a storyteller with no story to tell. By the way, yeah, yeah. that's wild. Well, these guys are really, awesome. They're having fun. Yeah. For you guys yeah. to sit here and be like, ha ha ha. Wait a minute. Let's bring it up and mock them. That's mm. up, dude. That's a dude. Like, 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 by, yeah. by using them as an insult. Use, use it. This is you back in your victim thing. No, no, I'm not being a victim. I'm saying the jokes you're you're doing is not. It's not like. It's not PC. That's not cool. You know what's really oh, triggered? You're triggered. It's not PC. You don't get it. You're being a victim. Within seconds, these people have turned into caricatures. All Shane had to do was sit there and say, "This isn't funny. This feels mean," and they lost it. It's a wrap. If there's just one thing I really want to leave you with, it's the fact that under no circumstances should this man ever be called funny. If Hot to a Girl goes down on Mr. Beast mm. and shows what she can actually do, I think that's a good idea. What we need to do is see what? if Chris can still get his son. We need to see if Chris got the Mr. Beast left in him. Oh, 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 oh. We need to see if Chris got the bow wow, yippee yo, yippee yay. <laughs> Where them hot dogs at? Bark with me now. <laughs> yeah, we're calling this person a comedian. Great. And you know, it must be a bit of a tortured existence seeing all these people calling you a comedian while knowing could. deep down that you are in fact just a one trick, 2D, unfunny, fake deep, fake voice, no poise, overrated, thinks I hate it, spineless, racist, mindless, tasteless, born in 83, Gen Z wannabe, who mistook TikTok for talent and is now killing comedy one brain cell at a time. Braid him. Respectfully. But that's my take on the situation. Not respectfully. <laughs> oh, he read him down. I agree, okay? I agree with what was stated. Here's the issue. When you make these hateful comments, okay, that are racist, homophobic, et cetera, et cetera, um, and, and there's no actual real comedy there, you're just saying hateful things. <laughs> you're just spewing bigoted remarks and people are now going to focus on these hateful remarks that's equivalent to you making a racist joke and just coming out and being like mm, you're the n-word it's like okay if there's no comedy there and there's just hate then i'm gonna focus on the hate so that's why shane is just like mm, this isn't funny because it's literally not funny. If y'all would have told a joke that was actually funny, then, you know, people would laugh. And then that's when they like, all right, this is fucked up. <laughs> you know, they'll laugh as they're saying it's fucked up. Like, oh, that, that, that was a lot. You know, they'll, they'll at least do that because they can't deny that it's funny. But when it's not even funny, <laughs> it's just hateful. And you do come across as a homophobic or a, a racist. You, you, you come across as those things. I don't know Andrew, so I can't say for sure that he's racist, but it, it, it seems like he is. <laughs> it seems like he uses his platform and his, you know, stand-ups to get his shit off about how he feels about these marginalized groups. So that's my take on it. But am I pressed by this man? I don't give a fuck about Andrew. He can continue to do this, continue to have a large audience. Congratulations. I just ignore him. I don't react to him anymore. I'm pretty sure I've reacted to some comps years ago. But yeah, I don't pay him any mind because I just don't. I don't fuck with him like that. I don't fuck with his, his comedic uh, approach. So I just ignore him and go on about my business. Uh, but I mean, I understand people wanting to call him out. And it is what it is. Call him out. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye!